This is a very special occasion, thanks to Robert Edsel and the Monuments Men Foundation. The National Archives is able to add to its collection of Einsatzstab Reichsleiter Rosenberg ERR albums, popularly known as the Hitler albums. The volume before us today is the last known of the nearly 100 volumes created during World War II by the Nazis to catalog cultural property that was looted in Europe. The 39 ERR albums that had been used as evidence in the Nuremberg trials were long thought to be the only albums to have survived the war. More than 60 years later, however, the Monuments Men Foundation acquired three more albums and donated them to the National Archives. In recent months, the historical Monuments Men have been in the public eye due to the release of the motion picture about them. And I should mention, Robert's book has been on the New York Times bestseller list for 18 weeks now. Congratulations, Robert. We're honored to have with us today a real monuments man, Harry Ettinger, who was the inspiration for the character Sam Epstein in the film. And the photograph here is Harry in the Mines. Today, we're also very pleased to accept the fourth album from Mr. Edsel and the Foundation. The National Archives is becoming the world's leading resource on Holocaust-era assets, and these volumes enhance our role as that resource. Each album lays down further evidence of Hitler's premeditated theft of art and other cultural treasures. The Nazis' attempt to rewrite the political and cultural landscape of Europe is overwhelmed by the records of their deeds. <coughs> Our history is not clo a closed chapter. New evidence turns up and gives us more to ponder and study. And we're grateful to the Monuments Men Foundation for its continuing work to recover cultural and historical treasures and documents that were stolen during World War II. For more detailed information about the albums, I'll turn you over to Dr. Greg Bradshaw. Greg is senior archivist at the National Archives and has spent at least the last 20 years focused on Holocaust era assets records. Greg. William Manchester, um, in his book, Goodbye Darkness, uh, spoke about his time on Guadalcanal. And he said that the, his fellow Marines used to say that the Japanese fought for the emperor, the British for uh, glory, and the Americans for souvenirs. Um, and many American soldiers did pick up souvenirs during the war, as we know. Um, a um, young 18-year-old private in General Patton's army named Robert Thomas uh, in April of 1945 picked up two 16th century German law books and brought them home to San Diego. Uh, in this very room in 2009, he returned it to the German ambassador. And I like to joke with him, he wasn't going to be charged an overdue fine from the library. Um, General Patton uh, took home the original Nuremberg Laws to California. And David Ferriero and I went out to California in August of 2010 and retrieved them. So now today, Robert Etzel and the Monuments Men Foundation are donating to us what was just a souvenir to an American soldier serving in the last days of World War II in the Birches Garden area. He brought it home, probably not giving much thought to its historical significance. But it's actually an important piece of the historical past. The album is yet another evidence of the Nazi theft of cultural property. And it's also proof of the extent they went to document their uh, thievery. Uh, later, such documentation was used by the Monuments Men to ascertain, ascertain the legal ownership of such cultural property and affect its return. Uh, as the archivist said, this donation today, once again, demonstrates the efforts by Robert Etzel and the Monuments Foundation to help facilitate getting such pieces of history to an appropriate institution. In this case, it's the National Archives. So I'm pleased to introduce Robert Etzel, who besides uh, his involvement with the foundation is the author of Rescuing Da Vinci 
Saving Italy and the Monuments Men, and he is a true friend of the National Archives. Robert? Well, thank you to, uh, to Greg and to David and the many guests that are here and friends. 69 years ago, Supreme Allied Commander General Dwight D. Eisenhower cabled his superiors, informing them that the mission of this Allied force had been fulfilled. It's an historic day today to remember that. After six terror-filled years, the war in Europe had finally ended. But the work of the Monuments Men and Women was just beginning. In the weeks that followed, these soldier scholars discovered some 1,500 hiding places containing almost 5 million works of art and other cultural treasures, most of it stolen by the Nazis. They also found thousands of important documents, including 39 brown leather-covered albums containing photographs of works of art stolen from French collectors and dealers. These albums proved a critical part of the evidence at the Nuremberg trials. The discovery of album six provided first proof that there were albums in existence, more than just these original 39 albums, found in May 1945 by Monuments Men Jim Rohrmer. And you can see Rohrmer standing on the steps of the castle at Neuschwanstein, uh, where the first 39 albums were found. Album number six was found about 130 miles away at Adolf Hitler's home in Berchtesgaden in the uh, Bavarian Alps. And it was there that an American soldier picked this up as a souvenir, having no idea of its importance, and brought it home. Albums seven, eight, and 15, which the Monuments Men Foundation has previously donated to the National Archives, were found under similar circumstances also at Berchtesgaden, at Hitler's home. And I believe the remaining missing albums, somewhere between a minimum of five and perhaps as many as 57, were also located there and will eventually, and many of them will eventually surface. The presence of these albums in Hitler's mountaintop retreat underscore his personal involvement in this massive premeditated theft and highlight their importance to him as a welcome distraction from the depressing war front news. Historical significance aside, album six also provided us at the foundation with an extraordinary coincidence. The first photograph in album six, which you'll see in a few minutes, shows a painting by a French painter named Larguillier. The actual painting by Larguillier is one of three works that you see in this photograph here, the one on the right being carried down by this American soldier in what I like to point out to people is a, uh, the idea of photo ops is not a modern day concept. You can see the Army Signal Corps has choreographed this scene. And you have the coincidence then of this album containing a photograph of a work of art that's being found 130 miles away. Quite a surprise to us when we opened this album up and saw that as the very first photograph in it. The Monuments Men Foundation often receives calls on its toll-free tip line, 1-866-WORLD-WAR-II-ART, or WWII-ART. In fact, the number is 1-866-9944-278. And we receive those calls from veterans and their family members seeking information about cultural treasures and uh, sometimes artistic objects that were brought home after the war. We're using the visibility of my books and, importantly, the Monuments Men film that, for the first time ever, is engaging the public to ask them for their help in locating and returning these important objects to their rightful owners. The Foundation does not charge anyone for doing this work. Discoveries of long-lost objects are occurring almost every day from the dramatic news of some 1,400 works of art that were found in a Munich apartment last November to the emergence of this single album that's being donated today. Hundreds of thousands of cultural objects remain missing from World War II, part of the altered legacy with which we live. Thanks to George Clooney and the success of the Monuments Men film, global awareness about these heroes of civilization and the subject of Nazi looting is reaching a worldwide audience uh, in a way it has never done so before. I believe that the home, entertain, home entertainment rollout of the film and the related materials, the Blu-ray, are gonna reach 
millions more people and provide more depth and interest in the story than has ever existed before. And it's going to help the Monuments Men Foundation further its work in locating and returning many of these cultural items that surface to the rightful owners, and in some cases, to archives, such as the National Archives. And in doing this work, we honor the legacy of the Monuments Men and Women. Ceremonies such as this are important because they cause us to pause and reflect, especially on such an important anniversary as today. While we're gathered here to speak about objects, the Foundation is always mindful that World War II claimed the lives of some 65 million people, including two Monuments Men, both killed during combat, trying to protect parts of our shared cultural heritage. That sense of humanity is imbued in all that we do. We are therefore proud to uh, present and donate these, uh, this latest album, Album 6, uh, part of our long-standing and very, very um, important relationship with the National Archives to the nation. Thank you very much. And I'd now like to introduce Harry Etlinger. Harry, why don't you come on up? I'm not going to come up and talk about the broad aspects of what the, we Americans and uh, other countries did in order to come along and save the culture and the art of countries that had been invaded by the Nazis, who had only one interest in their life of making them superior to everybody else. All human beings are alike. Some are better, some are worse, we all go through that. We're all equal. And that's the message that uh, we uh, uh, try to come along and uh, talk about, or let's say implement, that all of us are equal and we must show respect for each other. We must show respect for each other's culture under which we particularly live. And so today, I am very honored, very privileged to have Robert Etzel get, provide this newest evidence of uh, the books that were generated by the Nazis with the stolen works of art that they had. And I hope over here that you will pay them the great respect for telling the world what an, uh, what an honorable thing that uh, we did during World War II. Instead of taking things, we saw to it that they were returned. And I'm very thankful having been part of that particular group. Thank you very much.